Greetings, 101 students. Ryan here to help you understand the acid-base titration experiment. Let's start by talking about what your goal in this experiment is and the theory behind your procedure. Your goal is to determine the mass percent of acetic acid in vinegar. To do this, you are first going to determine the mass of a given volume of vinegar. You will then determine the mass of acetic acid in that same volume. If you then divide the mass of acetic acid by the mass of the vinegar and multiply by 100%, you will get the acetic acid's mass percent. On commercial bottles, when they say percent acidity, this is what that number means. A bottle that says 5%, for example, is 5% acetic acid by mass. As part of your post lab, you'll take the mass percent you get and compare it to what the bottle says it is. So you could think of this experiment as being a kind of quality control check for the vinegar maker. To determine the mass percent of acetic acid in your vinegar, you need to figure out two things, those being the density of your vinegar and the molarity of acetic acid in it. Here's how you'll take the data you'll need to calculate the vinegar's density. You will first weigh an empty weigh bottle, then pipette a sample of vinegar into it. To get the vinegar into the pipette, use a pump to draw it up just past the index line. Then take the pump off and use your thumb or finger to hold the liquid up. While it's over a waste container, let it drain down to the line, then let it gravity drain into the bottle. If you look close, you'll see a small bit of solution will get left behind in the pipette. It's calibrated to account for this, and this is why you don't want to use the pump to force the liquid out of it. After you've pipetted the vinegar into the bottle, re-weigh it with the vinegar inside. In your calculations, you can get the vinegar's mass by subtracting the mass of the empty bottle from the mass of the bottle with the vinegar. And that's all you need to do to get the data for calculating the vinegar's density. Now let's look at what needs to happen to determine its molarity. To determine the vinegar's molarity, you will titrate it with sodium hydroxide. This begins with pipetting samples of it into Erlenmeyer flasks, followed by some DI water and two or three drops of phenolphthalein indicator. This indicator will tell you when your titration is finished. As soon as you have added enough sodium hydroxide to react with all the acetic acid present, it will make the solution turn from clear to a pinkish magenta color. For the titration itself, you'll use a burette to add sodium hydroxide to your flasks until the solution inside changes color. In case you're not familiar with using the burette, here's a few tips to help you out. To set one of these up, you first rinse it with the solution you are going to dispense out of it, in this case sodium hydroxide. You then fill it past the 0.00 mil mark and drain a little bit of the fluid out, enough to get the fluid below the 0.00 mil mark. There are two reasons for doing this. One is it gets all the air out of the spout at the bottom. The other reason has to do with how the burettes are read. Since the actual physical markings on a burette are in tenths of a mil, you have to interpolate between them to read in hundredths of a mil. To show you how to do this, let's look at a close-up image of the meniscus in a burette. The bottom of the meniscus here comes down to a point between the 16.1 mil and 16.2 mil marks. And if we use our imagination to divide the space between the markings into 10 segments, you can see it lines up best with the 16.16 marking, so we would record this as 16.16 mil. Of course, when you go to do this yourself, you won't have any thin lines to help you out like the ones in this example, which does make it a little harder to figure out what that last digit is. Just estimate it as best you can, and don't worry too much whether your estimate is a little high or a little low. With some practice, you'll get good at this in no time. Now let's come back to the other reason why you want to drain the fluid below the 0.00 mil mark and not to it. The second reason is because it is hard, and time consuming, to get the meniscus down to exactly 0.00, to the point that, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't happen. So if you are truly reading the meniscus properly, you won't have any 0.00 mil readings. To determine how much fluid you've dispensed from your burette, you will first take an initial reading, to the hundredths place, by interpolation. After you have dispensed what you need to, you will take a final reading and calculate the volume dispensed by subtracting the initial reading from the final. For your titrations, you want to bring your solutions to a very pale magenta color that is just visible against a white background. If you add too much sodium hydroxide, you may overshoot and your solutions will look like this, with a prominent obvious color. Unfortunately, if you are very close to the endpoint, even adding just one full drop can cause it to overshoot. 
To avoid this, you will probably have to add the last little bit of titrant by slowly opening the valve until a half drop forms on the tip. To get this half drop into your flask, you can either touch it to the flask's inside and wash it down, or use your wash bottle to spray it off. Titrations can be slow, but there is one thing you can do to make this experiment go a little bit quicker. Don't try and be super careful with the first flask you titrate. Do it quickly to give yourself a rough idea how much titrant you'll need. Once you know that, on the subsequent flasks, you can crank the burette valve wide open to bring them close to the end point, and then go very slowly and carefully from there. And that's pretty much it for your data collection. When you're done, make sure to dispose of all solutions in the lab room's waste container. Also make sure you've drained all the sodium hydroxide solution out of your burette and thoroughly rinsed it with DI water. When you're done rinsing it, leave it with its valve open.